If you clicked on this video, I assume you're tired of sanding PLA like I am, and you're looking for an easier way to smooth your prints before painting. Well, you're in luck. Today's method of using acetone and spot putty is pretty easy and works well. I'll be using my normal dome test print to try to get a high gloss finish and a tabletop miniature building to create a textured stone or stucco finish up with the putty. For matte and textured finishes, the process is very simple. But if you're looking for a high gloss finish, there are a few things you need to keep your eye on. So keep watching and I'll explain the process to you. We'll start with the dome print. It was printed at a 0.3 layer height and shows as the angle of the layers get steeper, the worse the layer lines get. I'll start by giving the print a light sanding with 120 grit sandpaper to knock down any high spots on the print. The worst of the ridges are now sanded down, but you can still hear how much is still left when I drag my fingernail across the print. Now to combine the putty and acetone. Start with adding the putty to a container and then add acetone until the mixture is a thick paint consistency. Acetone gives off strong fumes, so I'll be wearing a respirator with charcoal filters at least until it's all evaporated. I suggest using a paper or metal container as acetone can dissolve certain plastics. Now that the mixture is ready, we can start painting it on the print. Almost forgot my gloves. I don't really need to wear them, but I just don't want to get the putty all over my hands while handling the prints. When applying the putty, you want to make sure the coat is thick enough to fully cover the print and fill in all the layer lines. One positive aspect with this process is it's very easy to control where you apply the paste and you can work around detail areas. Here's what it looks like fully coated. Now I just have to wait for the putty to dry. It's 1.09 p.m. So I'll mark that down so I can time how long it's going to take. The drawing time is the biggest negative with this process and why I like UV resin instead as the drawing time is instant. While the dome's drawing, I'll work on the building. The building's pretty smooth to start as it's mostly vertical walls. There are a few print issues that look like under extruding problems and the top of the building is curved so it has some pretty big layer lines. But the process of coating it is the same as was for the dome. Let me know what you think of the process so far in the comments below. And if you like the video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It makes a big difference to how many people see the video. And here's the top half done. The parts are now fully dry. Around 2.30 they seem mostly dry and maybe could have been sanded. But uh, after checking back around four, I noticed they were completely dry. So I would say it took about two hours for them to dry totally. If you sand them before they're completely dry, instead of creating a dust, it creates more of like a paste, which really clogs your sandpaper and you run the risk of uh, the putty coming off in big chunks and not sticking to the print. Now I'll start sanding with 120 grit paper. The sanding goes pretty quickly as the putty is very easy to sand. Just a few spots need to be touched up and this is done. The lower part of the print is definitely fine and filler primer will take care of the rest, but I'm not sure about the top. This is where the drying time becomes an issue. If I apply another coat, I have to wait another two hours before I can sand again. 
So I guess we'll just go with what we have and see what happens. Just need to clean up some of the grooves in the honeycomb area, which is also pretty easy to do as the putty scrapes off very easily. Now to work on the building. I was originally going to sand the building smooth, but then I thought instead it'd be interesting to leave the surface rough to mimic a stone or stucco texture on the building. So I'm just lightly sanding with 120 grit paper and using a steel wire brush to remove any high spots and any loose debris, but still leave the texture from the putty. Now back to the dome with its first coat of filler primer. Taking a look while the paint's still wet, you can still see a lot of layer lines. Now with the primer dry, the layer lines are still very noticeable, but not as bad if there was no putty at all, but they're still there. The print definitely needed another coat of putty, but we'll have to see uh, what it looks like after a few more coats of primer. Before the next coat of primer, I'll give it a sanding with 220 grit paper. After the second coat of primer, it's looking better. Surface is pretty smooth, but you can still see the layer lines in the reflections of the light. I'll give it a quick wet sanding with 400 grit paper and then a third coat of primer. Layer lines mostly look gone after the third coat of primer. We'll see what it looks like when it's completely dry. Here I'm rubbing the print with a paper towel. It acts as a fine sandpaper to burnish the surface and remove anything that's stuck to the paint like dust. It does look pretty smooth. I guess it's time to go to paint and find out. I'm using the same acrylic paints I've done with my other tests. This time I'll do a lime green and of course mix with metallic. Paint looks good. Time to spray. The building is getting a beige sandstone color. I didn't prime it first because I didn't want to fill in any of the scratches, but I probably should have painted it uh, white or gray before adding color, uh, just to make the process easier. Here's the dome after a few coats of color. It's mostly okay, but I can see some layer lines at the top. It feels smooth, so I'm not sure if it's a difference in the color or an actual height difference. I'll finish up the dome with a few coats of gloss clear coat. The end result is pretty good. The light reflections look smooth, but I can still see layer lines. Uh, I'll show a close up in a moment. And here's what the building looks like with the surface texture. For most applications and from a reasonable distance, this looks great. I give it an 8 out of 10. You really have to look close to see the layer lines. I'm not exactly sure what's causing it, as the specular highlights from the lights are mostly smooth with only a few hints of the layer lines. If anyone has any thoughts what could be causing this, post it in the uh, comments below. The building turned out pretty good and keeping the texture saved a bunch of time in sanding. I'm sure if someone that was actually good at painting miniatures painted this, it would look great. I didn't pay enough attention to keep the scale of the textures to match the scale of the building, so some spots look a little weird, but most of all it looks pretty good. So 
So to sum up the results, it works pretty well, with the drying time being the only real downside. The upside is it's easy to apply and easy to sand, especially if you're not trying to get a glossy finish, or if you want to create a textured finish on your print. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I'll have a playlist at the end with other post-processing techniques I've tried if you want to see some different ideas. Thanks for watching.